Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the tenth episode of Asin Talks. This is the tenth week in a row that we're doing, and my name is Ajit Panikar, and I'm an Asin member for ten years, and I lead Nova, an air conditioning company, and Pure Blue, a tech-enabled startup in the air conditioning domain. And as usual, my co-host is Alim. Hi, Alim, how are you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. My name is Alim. Besides moonlighting as Madhavan's. uh look alike i also run a company called synapse which is a creative advertising company and i'm excited to have you guys again on our 10th episode I'm, i never knew the show is actually going to go for 10 episodes but yeah fantastic <laughs> yeah that's right and we've got some really interesting people on the last 10 episodes but before we get in our speaker today for any of you guys who are joining us for the first time and you're wondering what ascent is all about ascent is a not for profit expression of harsh mariwala chairman marico limited and his passion to identify high potential growth stage entrepreneurs and enable them to grow their enterprise and enrich their entrepreneurial journey launched in 2012 ascent today empowers more than 850 entrepreneurs across india ascent is designed as a unique powerful peer to peer platform that leverages the power of the collective through self facilitated groups called trust groups which enables entrepreneurs to share and exchange experiences ideas insights and create a healthy ecosystem to learn from each other today's event a weekly event ascent talks showcases ascent members and their interesting entrepreneurial journeys so ali let's introduce our guest from andabar today So welcoming today is Nirav Rawal. Uh, Nirav, besides the three of us all being runners, so that's a very unique show today. But Nirav also runs a company called Q- Kiwi QA Services, an independent software testing company, Mobio Solutions, a business technology solutions company, uh, Get On CRM Solutions, a Salesforce consulting company. That's a lot of companies. Okay, I can't manage one. Uh, Nirav holds a computer applications degree, holding MB. Uh, 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 sorry, Nirav holds a computer applications degree, uh, an MBA. He's also a marathon running entrepreneur from Ahmedabad. He's worked for some big corporations like Wells Fargo and Oracle, but has also stuck uh, around his own independent consultancy and IT services company owner. When he's not busy analyzing the stock market, that's so Ahmedabad. <laughs> On perfecting his productivity techniques, Nirav can be found spending quality time with his wife Pooja and son Rohan. Although he does sneak in a marathon training session once in a while. So if you are from Ahmedabad and you need some tech help or just want to go for a run or have a cake, I think so. Uh, Nirav is your man. <laughs> Welcome, Nirav. Thank so, you, thank you, thank you, Ajit. Thank you, Alim. Thanks for the for the kind yeah. introduction. Off the bat, tell us about your business, the nature of the business, scale, some clients and solution, just to understand and kick this off. Sure, sure, sure. So as you kind of rightly introduced, we run three different IT services companies. So first one which runs uh, is with the name of Kiwi QA. which is a software testing company so we test software applications uh and it kind of started 10 years back me and my co-founder niranjan kind of started it so typically in a software development uh, uh, ecosystem the companies which develop softwares they would test the applications and we found that there is a market specifically in the startup and mid-sized companies where we could do an independent testing so uh, so that's how it kind of started um, we we kind of we are a full service software qa company so in the world of software quality assurance you we'll probably hear the terminologies like functional testing ui ux testing automation testing load performance testing security testing and so on so typically all of this different kind of testings are required when you are building a software and what we figured was that the companies which are building the software is may or may not have all the capabilities when it comes to quality assurance and specifically which are very tech oriented companies so that's the market that we were chasing um in a period of 10 years we've been able to build a team of about 110 plus people we are based here in ahmedabad we have a small team in baroda and in bangalore and a sales office in australia so that's what we do at kiwi qa uh while in the journey of kvk what we realized that there is also a potential uh, market which we could address which is in building software applications uh however we didn't wanted to club it with the kvk as a brand and kind of operationally run it separately because we didn't wanted to have a conflict of interest for the customers who would want to just use our services on the testing side 
So that's how we started Mobio Solutions. As the name suggests, at that point of time, the idea was that we could probably just become a, a mobility company, mobility solutions company. So we built mobile applications. However, over a period of last couple of uh, years, we've been kind of a full scale custom software solutions company. So anyone has any idea or any existing software that they would want to customize or would want to get it developed, that's where we kind of come in, we ideate, we work with them, we analyze the requirement, and then we build web and mobility solutions around it. A team of about 70 odd people as we speak, um, and as I mentioned, they're operationally kind of separately ran out of the city. So two separate locations completely out of, so QVQ and Mobile Solutions run out of two separate uh, premises. And the third one, uh, uh, we kind of uh, were experimenting with Salesforce as a CRM. Um, and, and that's the market that we thought that could get us into an enterprise segment because the first two companies was more catered towards startups and mid-size, however, our entry into enterprise is something that we were constantly chasing. And we realized that maybe a package solutions or something of that sort could probably could get us in. So that's where we we, we decided to kind of experiment with Salesforce. Uh, and uh, in the last couple of years, we've been able to build a team of about 40 odd Salesforce consultants. Um, and then we hired it off as a separate company with the name of Get On CRM Solutions. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's just a very quick, um, introduction to what we do uh, as a group we are like about 220 odd people um, and and our customers are primarily based out of north america europe australia and, and india so that's that's our customer it's amazing you know Nira, three companies you are i mean like how alim was saying you know we struggle to manage one but you've got three companies but here's a very interesting part that we would really like to know is that you set up three companies at three different times and uh, they're all in the IT space. Uh, and why would you want to have three different companies? I understand the conflict of interest, but everybody knows that it's you who you are, right? So why three different companies? Uh, tell us a little bit of an insight into that. What are the strategy behind that? And also, sure. what is this industry all about in terms of growth potential? Yeah? How big do you, how big is this industry? And what are the new things yeah. that's happening in this tech space? Sure, sure. No, so it's a, it's a, that's, that's something that I get asked all the times that why not have one company and then kind of have three departments doing the same activity, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 you know, when we kicked off Kiwi QA, right, that was more on software testing and all our branding has been across with a view that we are an independent testing company, right? So customers come to us with a view that we don't do any software development, right? That's number one. Number two, uh, the kind of depth that is required for us to build one company, right? I mean, if I look at quality assurance as a department and quality assurance as a company, I think it's too different ballgames altogether, right? So, so very, very few companies have been able to build department as deep as what we've been able to build in a, in a, in a company. So that was one. Number two, uh, we have different partners. However, there are a couple of common partners among the three different companies. Uh, so we all wanted kind of all comes with one specialization. So Niranjan, who is my partner at KVQA, is out and out a uh, software testing expert for about last 20 years. Hardik, who is my partner in Mobile Solutions, uh, he is more of a custom solutions person, has done a lot of work in the enterprise sales, uh, space. And Minkesh, who is my partner in Get On CRM, he's a Salesforce guy. All, all his life is done Salesforce person. So we thought that it probably makes sense that we actually kind of have three separate companies, three separate brands. That's one. Number two, the kind of opportunities that we also look forward to in the next couple of years that they actually can be independently evaluated by large size companies if they would want to kind of make an investment or or they would want us to be part of their operations, right? So, so that's an opportunity which we've been getting since last two years, uh, you know, actively, though we have decided not to kind of take any immediate action. but. Uh, so that's also something that we have on the back of our mind that, you know, kind of build those brand independently, let it kind of uh, take its own course uh, and kind of follow its own market because each of these markets are quite different. Uh, and then we'll see if there's an opportunity which makes sense for us in the future that at least one or two or all the three could be taken up by specialized companies. We'll probably kind of see the merits of it at that time. Yeah. Now, as far as the 
Yeah, sorry. I mean, on your other side, as far as the growth is concerned, right? I mean, in terms of each of has its own market. So if I have to kind of just talk about the software testing as a market, it's it's a it's a huge market. I mean, I would say uh, if if I follow uh, what I read, it's about a forty billion dollar market uh, worldwide, which is expected to grow at least seven to eight percent year by year. If I look at the custom solutions market, it's almost about fifteen hundred billion dollars market. Again, expected to grow, you know, for next ten years at a rate of eight to ten percent or higher. Similarly, on the on the Salesforce side, on the CRM side, right? So, so the market potential is huge. I think with the kind of digital transformation projects, engagements, uh, small size companies and large enterprises have kind of have been doing, and and I think there's it's no escaping that you can now avoid. Uh, being a digital company, you cannot just run a, a vanilla business. And I think with that in mind, I think next ten years, I think we feel that we are in the right space and hopefully grow exponentially in each of these companies. You know? yeah. Awesome. So Ali, you know what he's saying? He's telling the market is huge. There's a lot of money to be made. So one finger in the ghee, one in the butter, and one in the pani. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> all connected. <laughs> Yeah. And, just in the hand. and anyway, yeah. yeah. Uh, Meera, just tell me one thing. So it's it. I mean, uh, obviously, like Ajit also mentioned, and you also mentioned, it's a huge market. Uh, and but there is also a lot of players. Here. So what differentiates you, and what kind of changes do you bring in this market? I mean, what is it that's unique about you, and how do you kind of create that impact? Right. I mean, for us, as I as I, what we feel that we like to kind of go deep into a segment. So when I talk about quality assurance, so let me just give a different perspective to it, right? So think about a software, right? Uh, a software which which is kind of being used by 10,000 users or 15,000 US users, you know? Now, in a typical scenario, you would see that every couple of weeks, there is a new release which is going out to that software, which most of the users wouldn't know, but behind the scenes, that's what's happening. Now, the kind of exhaustive testing that is required, right? There's a lot of effort that goes in. So one way to do it that is that you do kind of a manually, you kind of test the applications. The other way to do it that you can kind of automate the entire software testing part to it, you know, so you can write scripts where something which would take five days, seven days for a team of four or five people, you can bring it down to two hours. And that's where we come in. We kind of automate the entire testing piece to it. The third kind of service line that we have, what we call it load and performance testing. So in simple terminology, if you are using a software and you feel that the software is running slow, it's taking time to load because more people are using it, right? It's And that's when you lose the customer. So we kind of simulate those scenarios for a customer much before they go live, you know? So, so in a time like uh, Christmas or Diwali or where there's a lot of marketing efforts that would go into a portal, we actually can kind of do those simulations and let the customer know that your application is scalable up to 10,000 users, 50,000 users, and these are the things that you can do to make it more scalable, right? And and uh, security testing, which is something which you can't avoid in the today's space. So that's how different we are. And now what we realize is that most vanilla QA departments in a, in a, in a, in a typical software development company wouldn't have this kind of capabilities. So that's what we bring on to to uh, you know, kind of offer to our customers. Similarly, in the Mobio solutions and in the Get On CRM, right, our focus is such kind of more towards very specific industries. So we, in last five years, we have built a portfolio of about hundred plus customers. But going forward, we feel that we kind of kind of focus more on fintech, insurance, logistics, and renewable energy as a domain. So in last couple of years, we have built very solid customers there and our understanding of the domain is pretty good. So keeping our technology kind of uh, as, a, as a backbone and a strong point and our ability to understand the business of this four segment is what we kind of bring on to the table and we kind of help customers to give right solutions. So it's just not manpower providing, it's more of about understanding their business, understanding their problems and giving them the solution. So that's where we are kind of transitioning our organization into. And again, on get on CRM being uh, Salesforce. Now, Salesforce is world's largest CRM company, uh, and it has a lot of clouds that it, you can probably think of. A very complex uh, software that has been built. So, any company which is in, which is into Salesforce ecosystem, there's a good chance that 
they may not have all the capabilities while they have built they have bought the software but when it comes to implementing it they may not have all what it requires and that's where we've been spending a lot of time building the capabilities within our team so that if there's a requirement that we could kind of help the customer to kind of streamline their whole uh, customer engagement we would probably want to do that so that's that's the key differentiator i would think so had you been a what we feel that had we been a very generic uh, software development company our focus would not have been as intense as we would want it out to be you know yeah maybe so you know you know, you know for someone who's i mean you know, for someone who is doesn't understand the space in any way no will say yeah this guy's taken us to mars ye kahan pe leke gaya yaar it's a different world so <laughs> but but <laughs> if i just could add a little bit more complexity to it so as we oh. see, <laughs> so we 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 are pushing ourselves to now get into data engineering and that's where i didn't disclose the name of the fourth uh, brand that we are on the way to build which is called get on data uh, where we would only do data engineering work so again we kind of very deep into data engineering is what we would want to do in next two years and build large size team so So yeah, that's, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Nira, 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 उसके लिए चौथा पार्टनर है. चौथा. And we are all common. So so we are all we share. We we have all common partners. We are the. I think uh, it's it's uh, we have great trust among ourselves, and and I think we bring lot onto the table in terms of building each of these organizations together. Yeah. But Nira, Nira also everybody yeah. loves Raymond. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Nira, tell us something. Like how Sadat, who came as our speaker last time, you had a damn good job at Wells Fargo. You were with Oracle. Why did you leave? Why did you? I mean, that is. I mean, it's a dream job for all these guys. Why yeah. did you quit and when did this? Actually, the first to pagar me, twenty fifth to pagar milta hai, yar. No, no, you are right. And, and, I mean, and tell us. I mean, I think you should share with us how this whole entrepreneurial journey and what were the challenges you faced around this. You know, in sure. running the organization, what are the kind of differentials that you found? Sure. So I, in fact, had a bit different uh, story for myself. So I started working in US. So all my all my first few years were in US. So I worked for companies like Wells Fargo, and you rightly put up. You know, it was a kind of a dream job in Silicon Valley in Oracle Corporation. Those. large buildings you know work with the right team brightest people uh, uh, you know in silicon valley however i had my own reasons to be back for family reasons i decided me and my brother we both were in us and we decided to kind of come back for good um, and then kind of also one decision that we had made up for ourselves that we want to be in ahmedabad you know so we didn't want it to be outside ahmedabad so within that kind of parameter we were trying to figure out what is that we could do So the next couple of years, uh, I kind of worked again here in Ahmedabad in companies like Future Group, uh, and I did few independent stints uh, in terms of doing consulting. Uh, however, the entrepreneurial bug, which was on the back of my mind all the way, you know, I honestly kind of till then didn't have the courage to go out and do on my own. And that's when uh, I took a break of about a couple of months. You know, I I was honestly kind of burned out in terms of what I was doing. Uh, and i had a very honest discussion with my family my brother and and that's when they pushed me i think this is what you would want to do just try uh, you know give yourself 18 months 24 months and see what you could do so that was very honestly that is when the transition kind of began i was uh, somewhere in between of my uh, probably 12 years 13 years of industry experience so what really came to our my advantage that i had actually seen how large companies work you know how 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 you know i've been on the both the side of software which is building a product company and building a services company you know so i had seen that what's the kind of pain that they kind of take uh, and very honestly i was lucky enough to get an exposure to work more on the operations and also on the sales side so so i i think i had a good head start when it came to i was not uh, like a you know no wise in the industry when i decided to go on my own yes the first few customers are always challenging the first two years are always challenging uh, but it was not something that i was mentally not prepared however the industry that we decided to go in right which was purely qa that was a bit difficult because we did probably we are the largest qa company in the state as we speak in the state of gujarat and um, to ask someone to outsource their software quality assurance right it's not an easy business to build at least then i think now there are a lot of qa companies uh, uh, as a as a very kind of that market is growing 
but we were kind of very uh, you know we, we were sure that there's a market to it me and my partner kind of worked hard in terms of convincing some of these customers uh, however what we had in mind that we could probably land up with large size customers but first few years i think we we kind of worked with very small size customers and startups and some of the credible names we ended up working with were like uh, you know cardeco.com in shorts you know paytm insider so they all uh, were our customers and some of them continue to be our customers so i think uh, uh, eventually the route to the, from the startups to an enterprise segment was kind of quite rewarding you know so a lot of these companies when they were starting out right they didn't have a qa team and that's when we came in and for a very long period of time we were, we were uh, their qa partners Super, super. And uh, Anita, I'd love to know about your ascent journey. I mean, tell us about your group. Tell us about you, how how you guys blend together, and what you all. Yeah. What's it really like? Yeah. No, I think it's been pretty interesting. So I was introduced uh, to ascent by a good friend of mine, and, and it was more of an on an experimentation basis. Honestly, I didn't expect too much when I kind of came in. I really didn't know what to kind of expect out of it. But the kind of group that I'm part of, I think it's an amazing group of folks. uh these are all folks from the different parts of india from uh, north south east and west and even the center part of the uh, of the country all come from different businesses uh, some of them are first generation entrepreneurs some of them are family run businesses both on manufacturing and services so the kind of experience sharing that happens on the platform is amazing um and we kind of met uh, kind of we are an online group so we meet kind of once in a year or at least twice in a year is that's the goal but we met for the first time a couple of months back uh, we did our lifelines together in bangalore uh, i think it was amazing uh, so yeah i mean i i look forward to this meetings that we have once in two weeks uh, uh, so the best part of the the the, the group is that you know you, you be yourself you know there's no one to judge you and and uh, and i think in in the journey of entrepreneurship it's it's a lonely journey at times i think so i i find it quite uh you know for me it's more of you know i i look forward to this so that you know there's a very honest sharing that happens what's happening in your life yeah so it's been amazing for me yeah but nirav you must also tell us about the on your your part of that wellness uh, group in ascent and uh, yeah what's the 100 day challenge that you put together for ascent members yeah. tell us about it yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I myself, I'm, I'm kind of a marathon runner. So I try and run a couple of marathons a year. And uh, when I was kind of asked that, could you be a part of this wellness group? So me and Abhishek, who is also my co-partner in the wellness group, we were thinking about it, and we thought, why not we kind of have everyone in the group be part of hundred days of uh, steps challenge, right? And uh, so this is a hundred days challenge. um uh, we got about i believe 60 plus people from ascent kind of registered uh, and we expect few more to come in uh, so the challenge is that you kind of they they throw you a challenge that okay i cannot disclose the challenge but i'm just giving you an example but it okay uh take walk 4000 steps a day for next 10 days right you can have a super day where you need to walk for 6000 steps right so uh and then the the that kind of in the second after 10 days there's a new challenge which could be kind of 10% 20% incremental to what you have done right so there's no one judging you do it for yourself right and we thought that first of gen a lot of people make their uh, you know uh, goals that okay we want to get fitter what's the you know probably this is the best way to get people fitter and 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 while we are all in a group we can motivate each other and kind of get that uh journey started of fitness if not there you know so so that's the challenge that we we started and we are very excited to kind of uh, see it going in the right direction yeah yeah and that's that link you will find yes. htor.com and you can register on that link and be part of that challenge with all the other asin members across the country who is doing it so as he said there's 60 of them Yeah, but we are 850 of us, so I guess we should all give it a shot. It's interesting, yeah. It's damn good, Nirav. I mean, I think it's a it's a great initiative. And yeah. uh, okay, now now out of this mass orbit of yours on tech and everything, your four companies and your challenges and everything. Tell us a little about yourself. What's your personal hobbies? Yeah, what do you do other than work? But your family yeah. share some stuff about that. So yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I stay in a joint family. Me and my brother family we stay together. So uh, uh, 
Uh, I have a son, Rohan, my wife, Pooja. So my wife, Pooja, is also a runner. So so that's uh, wow. so we have good motivation every day in the morning who wakes up first and runs faster, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but other than uh, my work, uh, what interests me is stock market. I think this is something that I kind of follow very closely. I like to read books around finance, personal finance, stock market. I also have a group of people that I discuss stock market very, very closely, kind of, uh, so we meet kind of once in a week, once in 10 days, uh, kind of see what's happening in the market. And we actually ran two uh, uh, workshops in Ascent, you know, me and Rafik Bayou is my fellow Ascent member, you know, we ran actually how to do stock picking. Uh, and we ran two such workshops for all the Ascent members. So that is something that interests me. I'm not an expert. I'm learning every single day. So that's kind of gets me going. The other is the, um, I am a productivity buff. So I'd like to read a lot on productivity. How do you kind of improvise? Uh, how do you manage your day well? How do you get things done rightly? And so on. So, so these two things kind of keeps me going. Um, and then uh, at the end of the day with family and nice meal, I think that's what I look forward to. Amazing. So, so to our viewers, uh, please remember there are three of us who are runners. He spoke about running, and please look at Aleem. He is <laughs> trying to show off all that medals that he's got out there, which says that run this city. So that's all the city. cities that he's run. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but that's it. But I think it's great. So join that challenge. It'll be fun. It's always great to stay fit. That's fantastic. So, Adira, it's been fabulous actually having you here. We are just about three minutes away from our thirty-minute challenge to close each and every episode. But uh, uh, it's fantastic that uh, uh, to hear from you, uh, and it, and it's always exciting to see how a professional, uh, you know, hangs his boots and just gets into entrepreneurship. And then uh, yeah. we wish you all the best. Uh, may you, you build another 10 more brands and 10 more companies. But one thing is for clear, the pot of gold is definitely waiting for you <laughs> at the end of that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nero. Thank I'm you. I'm going to see Thank you when you. I'm in Ahmedabad next, uh, Nero, and we'll catch up. Absolutely. Soon. Look forward to seeing you. Okay. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks, Ali. Thank you. Right. Great. Awesome. Right. So that was, that was fantastic, man. So we have just about two minutes. So call for action. If we are at the end of the show, and there are two things you can do now. One, uh, just follow us on that LinkedIn profile, and every Friday we'll come up with a new story that will inspire you. But if you're a growth-ready entrepreneur, and through the last 10 episodes, you've kind of got a flavor of what kind of people are associated with Ascent, and you think you're going to benefit from it, then get to ascentfoundation.in and apply for membership. There's a disclaimer here. Uh, this option is not like you pay a fee and get an immediate membership. Ascent will get in touch with you, have the patience, let them evaluate you. And if you are truly growth ready, we'll be happy to have you in our cohort. So that's it for today. And we will see you next Friday, next year uh, at 11 a.m. So we're going to see you next year now uh, on the Friday, 11 a.m. What do you say, Ali? Happy New Year to all of you. And we look forward to a great year ahead with you, with your growth stories. And you never know, you could be featured in the next show. So Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah, because our TRP ratings are going up pretty fast. Okay, and everybody is watching us, you know. And, and, and I don't know if most of you guys are aware. So if you don't have time to actually, it's there on the Ascent Insights YouTube channel. You could go there and you can watch all these. Now, if you don't have time to sit down and watch, go to Spotify or go to Amazon Music. These are also converted as podcasts. So even while you're driving, you don't have to miss out on the episodes. Uh, and these are fabulous stories. And like how Neera said, you know, sometimes it's a lonely journey. And listening another entrepreneur's journey makes it much more inspiring and much more fun for you and to have a great day. So here's to all of you. Have a wonderful new year. We are pretty excited that we finished 10 episodes this year. Didn't realize how it just passed. And we're going to come back next year, same time, Friday, 11 o'clock, with some further interesting stories. Thank you very much. Bye, Aleem. Have fun. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. See you. Happy New Year. Bye.